Om. Om Yo Brahmanam Vitadhati Purvam Yo Vai Vedanscha Prahinoti Tasmai Tamha Deva Matma Buddhi Prakasham Mumukshurvai Sharanamaham Prapadye Om Shant Shant Shanti Om Namo Brahmadityo Brahma Vidya Sampradaya Kartribhyo Vanshar Shibhyo Mahadhyo Namo Guru Pya Sarvo Paplavara Hitaha Prashyana Khana Pratyagartho Brahma Iva Hamasmi Brahma Iva Hamasmi Vedantartha Vibhasakaya Gurave Shantaya Sanyasine Nana Vadi Nagedra Sankhapavaye Yogi Nravandya Yacha Mohadvanta Divakara Yabhagavat Pada Vidham Bibhate Tasmai Bhashakrite Namos to Satatam Purna Yabodhat Maneo Yasinish was it um Veda Yove de Pio Kilan Jagat Nirmame Tamaham Vande Vidya Til Tamaheshwaram Vidya Til Tamaheshwaram In this section of Sthita Prajna, there are, there is a section which not only, I mean, a section which already has described, which has given the distinguishing characteristics of Sthita Prajna, but at the same time, we find even a warning issued by Shri Krishna, a precaution to be taken, a caution. And that caution is that if the factors responsible to bring the prajna's theorem, to bring the stability to the knowledge, if those factors are missed out, then obviously the knowledge though has taken place, yet it will not be stable. It will not be tridha. It will not be strongly rooted, well established. And <coughs> this is common to all. Nobody can claim an exclusion from here. We don't require it. Because this is a general rule. So what are those factors in absence of which the prajna, the wisdom, does not stabilize? So naturally, the flip side of the coin would be the factors in whose presence the wisdom attains stability. 
Okay. So, <clears throat> Shri Krishna speaks over here and it is well uh, worded for us to understand by Vidyaranya Swami. Here is the verse. Yatato yapikaunteya purushasya vipashchitaha indriyani pramathini haranti prasabham manaha yatato yapikaunteya purushasya vipashchitaha indriyani pramathini Haranti Prasabham Manaha. Hey, Kaunteya, O son of Kunti. So now, whenever a name is called, it brings a, a better degree of attention. Whenever we want to convey something that is important, though we may be in a conversation only with that person, but we do, this is a method of communication of drawing the person's attention, <clears throat> listener's attention. And the topic that is being, that is being uh, expounded is extremely subtle. And therefore, their attention needs to be undivided very focused. So Sri Krishna very often uses this method, a vocative case, He Kaunteya, O Arjuna, O son of Kunti. Kaunteya means Kunti's son. He is O son of Kunti. Yatato yapi Kaunteya Purushasya Vipashchitaha. Yatataha Purushasya Vipashchitaha. Api. Now that Api is Kaimutika Nyaya, okay? Who is this person? Purushaha. Who is this Purushaha? He is Yatataha, the one who is sincerely striving. Huh? So the one who is sincerely striving on this path of knowledge, Shravana Manana Nididhyasanam, etc. also, Yatato, or he could be a sincere spiritual seeker. What happens to that? Not only that he is Yatataha, because very often people may be sincere and honest, but just because of their innocent, uh, uh, innocent Aviveka, Aviveka is innocent. People are sincere. But they are not vipashchita. They are not vipashchit. What is a vipashchit? Vipashchit means a person who is who is sharp in his discrimination. A person endured with sharp discrimination. Now look at that. No, we are not talking about anybody like us for whom spiritual pursuit is either a fad or some sort of idiosyncrasy or some sort of uh, a method of um, uh, utilizing the time very creatively or for some it is merely entertainment. There could be various reasons, but we are not talking about in any category like this, where the spiritual pursuit is, is given a secondary place. We are talking about a person for whom spiritual pursuit is his singular, sincere effort. Okay, so he is singularly, undividedly, wholeheartedly, wholesomely following his 
spirituality. Hmm. Not for the sake of showing it to the others, not for the sake of just feeling good. Uh, we have like, you know, we go to temples and then feel good. So this is not for feel good factor. For feeling good, you can take a glass of sugar cane juice. You feel good after taking that. So we, we are not talking about feel good. We are not talking about people who want to claim their spiritual supremacy over others. Anything of anything so filmsy. Yatataha. So Sri Krishna makes it very clear. Yatataha. The person is pursuing striving sincerely with wholeheartedness. Okay. So here is somebody whom we can admire almost. I mean, we can worship such a person. Yatataha api he kaunteya purushasya. Such a person. And he is vipashchita. He is extremely sharp in his viveka. So the viveka is not blunt. Hmm. So it shines in spite of all these things. Api, though a person may be like this, yet even for him there is one problem. And that is Indriyani Pramathini Haranti Prasabham Manaha. The Indriyas, the senses will lead his mind astray sometimes. <sighs> How are these Indriyas? Pramathini. They are, they are Pramathana Shilaha. Mathana means to churn. Okay. To churn. Sometimes, you know, certain situations or some words that people may speak especially very hurtful words. It just almost churns, you feel like it has churned your heart. Uh, churn the heart, wrenching the heart. I was squeezing and that somebody if uses extremely uh, cruel words with cruel intentions, it, you almost, one may even get a feeling of heart being squeezed. Uh, heart being squeezed. So, so we know that there is that feeling. So, Paramatana Shila, how are these, how are the Indriyas? They had, they are known for their notorious nature. And what is that, that, that their notoriousness? That they are pramathana, at any given opportunity, at the smallest opportunity, these senses will lead the mind astray, which means later on there will be only regret. Some, at the most, we may have some consolation given to ourselves. But <laughs> it will pramathana shila. They are, they are pramathana shila. The nature is to churn the mind inside out. And what is that churning? That it will lead, making the mind chase the objects. Hey, we have very well deciphered the fact that Sukham is not in any Vishayas. Sukham is not the nature of the Vishayas, of, of the objects. It is the nature of the self. It doesn't belong to any name and form. And yet, one will not only see Sukham in names and forms, but will, at, at, that, at that moment, at that moment of weakness, 
the person will give himself to 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 or like any ordinary person saying that this nama rupa nama rupa mak jagat this the world which is names and forms is 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 the abode of sukham huh? so and then that person will follow that is pramathana and pramatha pramathini haranti prasabham manaha that mind which is which is full of light also may be led astray now you see therefore uh, our uh, achutra in product rights he says tatra prashnyasthairye bahyendriya nigraho manonashasya asadharanam karanam tat ubhaya bhave prashnyanash darshana iti vaktum bahyendriya nigraha bhave prathamam doshamah the two factors which are response from this one shloka from this verse we have to draw a conclusion and what is this conclusion prashnas thairye the topic is about stability of knowledge prashnas thairyam if you all now remember the word prashna means tatva jnanam okay stai uh, prashna means tatva jnanam the knowledge generated by the pra- upanishad as the pramana which now shows this atma is brahman why did you approach upanishad why did you appro- approaching it means uh, you you approach any pramana with the same intention let us say i am going to say a sentence and then just observe what is your response to that sentence do this exercise now i am going to speak i am going to say a sentence and observe the response of this sentence a response to this sentence now i'm going to say what is the color of the object on your right hand side now when there was a sentence an interrogative sentence given to you as what is the color and everybody who so ever is sitting here in this class have because online you may be on on your table you may be in your room wherever so there are several objects on left and right but i have specifically asked what is the color of the object on your right hand side <coughs> now your eyes turned towards right okay so your 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 eyes the eyeballs turn to right or your your head turn to right to look at the object my question is why did you approach the eyes to see the object so which means you have approached the eyes in different words look at that what has happened let us go step by step that i have approached the eyes to know the object on right okay i did not turn my ears or the nose to smell and find out so in order to know the color i have gone only to the eyes i have approached the eyes so because colors to in order to know colors and forms 
the only pramana which operates, the only means of knowledge which will operate is the chakshurindriya. Though karana is, karana is also the shravanam, is, there is shravana indriya, there is tvage indriya, there is rasana indriya, there is ghrana indriya. All these various indriyas are there. Yet, what, where have we gone? One has, one has approached the eyes to know the colors and forms. So, so now is the question, in order to know Brahman, why do you want to know Brahman? Because by knowing Brahman, moksha is attained. Okay. By knowing Brahman, moksha is attained. Moksha is a purushartha and I want to accomplish this purushartha. And therefore, in order to know Brahman, I will approach what? Which Pramana? Dharma Brahma Pratipadakam Apaurusheyam Pramana Vakyam Vedaha. So now I will approach Veda. And which part of the Veda? Upanishad. And therefore, one approaches, exposes himself to the Upanishad. Got it? To Vedanta. Upanishad means over here, Vedanta. Now, let us understand that. Thus, the person has, has, has this knowledge, prashya. Now, having exposed the pramanam has operated, and you had that much, one, the person had that much degree of vairagyam, in order to allow the pramanam to operate. Now, first of all, so now the having acquired the pramanam, having acquired the pramanam, the pramanam naturally will work. If you have that uh, uh, system with you, it will work. The eyes is a system. The, the visual faculty is a system. It will operate. And it operates by itself. Just that there should not be any factor preventing, obstructing its operation. That is all that we require. All that one requires is that having acquired the pramana, now there should not be any obstacle preventing its operation. That's all. <sighs> So we have, there could be other obstacles in acquiring the pramana. That is another issue. But we are dealing, now it is acquired, it operates. Now there is this knowledge, Atma is Brahman. So now this person has a great degree of Viveka. So there is Prajna. The Prajna, Tatvajnanam is already born in him. But the thing is that this prajna is needs to be stabilized. This knowledge needs to be stabilized. Okay. So even in the opinion of those people, who are saying that knowledge happens only once. And that knowledge which takes place once is capable of destroying the ignorance completely. That is also correct, but how is that justified is a different uh, issue. That may be dealt with when we do the Avidya Nasha, Prakrana, when we when we understand the uh, the the concept of destruction of ignorance, that we will go to that paksha. How all the acharyas, how do they explain? We will see that. Uh, just an idea that we will say there are five opinions with this, and everything, all of them are correct. Whichever one finds, prakriyas are there in understanding that. Whichever comes to you as uh, giving uh, 
stability to your understanding that is that is acceptable now over here what has happened is the person is vipashchita he already has it but the stability of knowledge which now is is crucial for jivan mukti is not there then question is knowledge is there and why is it not stable so we are going to say there are two factors responsible to bring stability in absence of these two factors stability will not arrive what are those two factors one is how shri krishna says bahyendriya nigraha what is it one factor is bahyendriya nigraha mastery over the senses a nigraha then the second one is मनोनाश विच मीन समाधि अभ्यास सो विद्यारण्य स्वामी इज इन सम पीपल आर ऑफ ओपिनियन दैट विद्यारण्य स्वामी इज मोर इनक्लाइन टूवर्ड्स समाधि अभ्यास बट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दीज आर ऑल नॉट नॉट इन इडियोसेंट्रेसी ऑफ विद्यारण्य स्वामी और एनी वन बट दिस इज well established through pramana so vipashchitaha ye the one in whom this prashna already is there also will face this problem if bahyendriya nigrahi is not there to a uh, to 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 the extent adequate to for its stability and samadhi abhyasa is not there if samadhi abhyasa is not there and bahyendriya nigrahi is not there then in that case the prajna sthairyam will not take place it will always remain shaky okay and when these two factors are there prajna prajna sthairyam will be there which is then jivan mukti and where therefore we are saying vimuktascha vimuchyate it goes right up to there all right so now tatra prashna sthairye bahyendriya nigraha manonashasya asadharana karanam okay bahyendriya nigraha is the is the asadharana karanam is is the uh is an uh what do they call uh inevitable uh factor it is an inevitable factor for to attain samadhi now if samadhi and bahyendriya nigraha is not there tad ubhaya bhave prashya nash darshana now what will happen that if this ubhayam bahyendriya nigraha as well as samadhi and what is the relationship between bahyendriya nigraha and samadhi that bahyendriya nigraha is an inevitable factor to to cause to bring about samadhi abhyasa manonasha manonashasya asadharana karanam tat ubhaya bhave ubhaya means both bahyendriya nigra and manonasha prashna nasha what will be seen that even this knowledge knowledge once born will is not destroyed but what that prashna nasha means it simply means that the knowledge gets subdued the knowledge becomes subdued okay because under circumstances we will even ignore well established facts that's why in every court of justice the judge has to be a very stable person he cannot ignore facts 
he cannot ignore facts and then give a judgment. Okay. So therefore, what are we saying here is uh, Now that nasha is not knowledge getting destroyed. We have already seen it in the fourth, we, are see, we have seen it in the fourth chapter where we were talking about jnana raksha. We were talking about jnana raksha. What do, you, what do you mean by protecting the knowledge? What is the meaning of that, that idea? Protection of knowledge. Because somebody is going to come, come up and say, knowledge does not require any protection. Knowledge does not require any protection against false. That is true. But sometimes, so it, it will not destroy the knowledge, but the false may, may even uh, sometimes just cover it up. It cannot destroy. Knowledge has the power to destroy what is false. And that power in the knowledge, the knowledge needs to be, to be, to be, to, to, to develop that power and that power will be the stability of knowledge. Okay. So now we are saying that this knowledge may even get covered up in the din and roar of falsehood. Sometimes you will see that those people who have no logic in their argument will very often start shouting, <coughs> raising the voice, becoming angry. That raising the voice, becoming angry is only uh, a, a cheap substitute to, to, to show facts. It is not a fact, it is not, not showing any facts, but it is a sub, they think that it is a sub. Shesham kopena When one does not have anything logical, reasonable to say, the person will become angry. That anger he is just showing that there is, he lacks any logic, any reason over there. But what, what may happen as a result of that, that because that person speaks loudly, becomes angry, displays unusual confidence, threatening, uh, the facts may get clouded. Exactly this is what happens. That this prajna gets clouded. This clouding of the prajna, this clouding of the wisdom is what is then called as nasha over here. So how over here it will, so in absence of both, in absence of mano nigraha and mano nasha, uh, bahendriya nigraha and mano nasha, in absence of both. Now we are not just talking about Mano Nigraha, we are talking about Mano Nasha. So one is Bahyendriya Nigraha, because of which Mano Nasha becomes possible. So when both of them are there, then the stability comes, which means the knowledge does not get clouded, covered, subjugated, ignored subsided by, by falsehood. So therefore, ha indriya ha pramathini haranti prasabham manaha. So over there, the stability of knowledge is required. And if it is not, I mean, now he, he Shri Krishna gives you a kaimutika nyaya. Kaimutika nyaya, how do you say it is a kaimutika? Yatato yapi kaunteya. He is, he is indeed 
प्रसिद्धार्थ the word he over there is not english he he she it pronoun uh, it is what prasiddharth it is prasiddham even in case of a vipashchita even in case of a wise man who is striving sincerely <coughs> who is striving sincerely even in his case too the indriyas can play the mischief okay the indriyas can play this mischief and therefore if it can happen to such a great person to what to talk about anybody of us kaimut kanyay kimuta what to talk so in our case uh, this is this is bound to happen and therefore bahyendriya nigraha and manonash let us not even argue about it that well oh, it is not required we will do anything and take any sort of concessions okay and <laughs> take any sort of concessions <laughs> this is not becoming harsh or anything to yourself this is just becomes having an honest sincere analysis how to apply it that is already we have already seen it where in manonashakra where he says there are two types of upayas to bring the ka pacify the mind one is a mridu upaya which is a soft upaya remedy and then the other one is her uh, what do they say uh, 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 it, 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 uh, is a strong upaya okay what is the soft upaya soft is more powerful actually and that is to constantly expose it to viveka and he gives you that example of a pashu of a of a cow or a bull which has to be tamed hmm and we had seen this in our childhood too when that that animal has to be tamed those who have got dogs or cats at home they will also know you actually the soft upayas work well so he says by by using loving words affectionate voice and by alluring that cow by giving it nice um uh, green uh grass you can bring it into the cow shed otherwise there is other upaya also by shouting at it and by showing it a stick okay parushyam and stick and little harsh words and things like it can be brought into the cow shed so there are these two piles like that even the mind also can be tamed domesticated the soft upaya which is an which 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 will give quick result is by constantly giving exposure uh, to our uh, constantly exposing ourselves to to satsang by talking to the mind look here this is how it is you will cause your own um, loss misery hey you will be this is what will happen 
and when one constantly shows that now that mind understands and turns inward what is the other upaya which is amrudu upaya that upaya is something like hatha yoga pranayama it will work for some time but uh, with a long duration therefore pranayama etc works but when not that you know i did pranayama today now now my mind has become <laughs> very very calm and peaceful eh it it requires uh what do they call a duration a long time so over here yatato yapi kaunte ya purushasya vipashchita indriyani pramathini haranti prasabham manaha he api indeed even for such a great person to this if these two things are not there bahyendriya nigraha and manonasha even of that vipashchita that mind which is full of light also may be led astray by the indriyas how because these indriyas are pramathana shila okay the shila the nature is to 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 cause disturbance pramathanam mathanam again understand like you know how we churn the buttermilk like that mathanam and this is pramathanam prakarshena mathanam okay now if you have understood that even through kaimutika nyaya that if it is required by even such a great person what to talk about anybody of us we require it in a greater measure with more sincere efforts you see now furthermore yatataha now i will just bring you some points from achutrai modal yatataha what is yatataha one who is striving so achutrai moda writes bhuyo bhuyo vishaya dosha darshanatmakam yatnam kurvato pi yatataha means the one who is striving what striving means what A sweating ah huh? panting what do you mean by his strife ha huh? over here strife means bhuyo bhuyo again and again ha huh? in <clears throat> or in great more and more vishaya dosha darshanatmakam yatnam kurvato pi so the one who is doing the dosha darshanam in the vishayas now learn to do one thing when infatuated with any object we are bound only to think that this is the greatest thing in life and this is what it now take a breath and also think about its flip side think about its the other side too then one will have a more balanced view then one one will not be prejudiced biased in life so bhuyo bhuyo vishaya dosha darshanatmakam yatnam kurvato pi then the word is vipashchitah so yatatah we have got yatatah is also sixth case singular vipashchitah is also sixth case singular vipashchitah atyanta vivekinah api even a person who is extremely viveki means his viveka is sharp yet even for such a person haranti prasavam haranti means vikaram prapayanti sometimes even such a person also may get uh, anger or lust or greed or something may even enter into him vikaram prapayanti then there is a question how can this vikara take place in a person who has a viveka because the indriyas are pramathini 
because pramathini means a uh, there are five in number so it will be plural case and that plural will be pramathini okay so pramathini pramathana shilani atyanta baliyastvad vivekopamardana kshamani it means what <laughs> that it is going to disturb your peace vivekopamardana kshamani that it will subdue the viveka there comes a story in uh, what do they call mahabharata when kunti brought her sons to hastinapur after pandu's death after pandu died kunti the mother she did the antim sanskar of this king and because they were living in the forest he had he had given the reins of the kingdom to his brother who was blind saying that now though i am the king officially pandu is the king but you will be my representative and run the kingdom because pandu was cursed and so he said that i will now i will stay in the forest and her do some tapa so along with both his wives kunti and madri he goes to forest over there his five sons are born and pandu dies so kunti now the mother brings the children back to the kingdom saying that you you should they they should get what is their right what is their due and their due is that they are rightful heirs to the to the throne to the kingdom so she brings them now dhritarashtra who is the blind king now he says that though pandu was the king and it can go to his children yet my ambition to be the king and to give pass on the kingdom to my children is is what i want because that is my ambition though rightfully it should go to the sons of kunti but it will not go it will belong to me only i will only keep it so he and his sons now now his ambition has already polluted contaminated the minds of his sons and it it happens that influence remains till the end and the end is the life ended with duryodhan and dhritarashtra how what do they call it dushasan etc all the kauravas so these kauravas who are the sons of dhritarashtra they found out amongst these brothers the most uh, uh, physically strong is is bhima hey it is not possible because he can even fight an elephant he is that strong he he is strong he can even subdue an elephant he is that strong you know you should understand the strength of an elephant even if an elephant just sweeps his tail casually and hits your jaw or something it can fracture the jaw just you know casually whisking the flies it hits your jaw it can break the jaw it is the elephant is that powerful and this bhima is powerful enough even to subdue a male elephant who is in a rut can bring him down 
now no it is not physically all hundred of us can come together and yet bhima will be more strong so what they did was they poisoned him by feeding him some sweets in those sweets in that kheer they poisoned him and then tied him down with ropes and threw him in a river or whatever huh, in that river so he that he is already unconscious and he drowns that is the that is the part of the story why am, what happens next you can read it somewhere why am i bringing you this incident is though somewhat something may be powerful yet there are cunning ways yet there are cunning ways of subduing that what is powerful it cannot do it straight but it will do it in in malicious this cunning ways scheming way so also this knowledge though is powerful viveka is powerful yet in some way from back door it will come and it will overpower ha atyanta baliyastva vivek upamardana kshamani ha that is what will happen prasavam manaha to understand what is prasavam manaha he gives an example he says just as some powerful decoits in the olden days the traveling merchants could have to pass through towns from one town to next town selling their goods now if that merchant is a jeweler and he is going from one kingdom to another kingdom obviously he is not going to put his jewels for sale um, in the village market he will always approach the wealthiest people in this in the in that community or directly go to the king uh, um, and then sell it in, in that kingdom so they had to carry bodyguards with them has sashastra bodyguards with swords and knives and some you know bala bacha and all that they they will have to carry that spears and rods some bodyguards are there and these decoits used to know that there is a caravan of this merchant carrying jewels and they they will attack and they will attack in you know that gorilla tactics uh, and then he subdue even those bodyguards and take away the jewels so that is how bodyguards overpowering the indriyani api this is what the indriyas will do what will they do Vishaya Sannidhane Manoharati, that mind which is prasabham, full of light also, they will, they will lender it away. And what is the jewel of that mind? The peace, the joy will be all looted away, will be plundered away. Why? Because these indriyas are pramathi. And if this pramathini, not pramathi, they are pramathini. <coughs> and if this can happen even to a vipashchita what to talk about ordinary people like us and therefore let us not take any concessions any any special licenses therefore all the, for us nothing happens nothing happens me everything is happening and therefore when when one has got this extraordinary claim about himself from here hypocrisy is born this is where the hypocrisy is born because now that person wants to hide his own faults now because he wants to hide it he will frame different theories he will frame book stories have different uh, theories to justify his weakness instead of getting into the business of justifying the weakness heed to the words of shri krishna and just admit if it can happen to the vipashchita how it can happen to me also and even if one considers himself a vipashchita it will happen even to you therefore 
stay very, very alert and follow what Shri Krishna is going to say further. Let us see what, how, the, how the teacher is going to wade our way, pave our path through all this muck to the destination of Jivan Mukti. Let us see that. So this is not actually talking about Jivan Mukti, but this is the, he is now talking about those two things. Hmm. Uh, Bhayendriya Nigraha and Manonasha. Okay. Let us see that further when we meet for the next class. Next in the sense of tomorrow. Today being Shankaracharya Jayanti, we will meet again at 9.30 Indian time, which is now this is uh, just about a uh, few minutes to seven. We will end the class here and meet again after one and a half hour. So those who are able to join, please join. This is Punya to do the puja of, your, of the teacher. Okay. So it gives Punya. It, it, will, it will help. Let us meet again after some time. Those who can't, then you can watch it later on, whatever you do or so. Otherwise, here we will do the Shankaracharya's puja. Om. Yasya nishvasitam veda yo vede bhyo khilan. Sorry, what is it? Oh, two and a half hours. Sorry, extremely sorry. Or not one, one and a half hour will be 8.30. So two and a half hours. So you have sufficient time. Okay, sorry. Ha. Om yasya nishvasitam veda yo vede bhyo khilan chagat nirmame tamaham Pande Vidya Tirtha Maheshwaram Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Ad Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vishate Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashikrita Vande Bhagavanta Punaf Punaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmeti Muti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namaha Om Dhanivad